Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Recipes and Reads. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm so glad that you're here. Today we are here to talk about some very popular book talk and booktube books that I just have no interest in reading. So you could say that I have recently discovered book talk and recently discovered is not exactly the right phrase because of course I've known about TikTok and book talk for quite a while. But in all honesty, I just don't have the time or the energy to dedicate to another social media site. So I had no interest in being on TikTok whatsoever, whether as a consumer of content or as a creator of content. It just really wasn't in the cards for me. However, I've kind of realized that book talk can be quite a great resource for bookish research, if you will. And so I went ahead and I created an account and I was scrolling and just trying to kind of like curate my feed so that I was really only seeing seeing bookish related videos. And as I was watching a handful here and there, especially videos like, are these BookTok books worth the hype and things like that. And I was seeing a lot that were repeated over and over and over again. And I realized that these are also books that I see featured quite heavily on BookTube as well. They get a lot of hype, they get a lot of praise. And I was just looking at them and I was like, you know, I have never wanted to read these books. They've never really been on my radar. And I thought it would be interesting to do kind of like a chit chatty style video talking about some of those books and why I don't plan on reading them. So I have a list here of about 10 books that I'm going to go over in this video. They're really listed in no particular order and I'm just going to go ahead and discuss them in the order that they are listed. So the very first book that I want to talk to you about today is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston and I know that this has recently gotten an adaptation which I believe is already out or maybe not but I do know that that is getting a lot of buzz as well. If I remember correctly this is a romance between the son of the American president who in this book is a woman and it's also the son of like a member of the royal family possibly and from what I've heard about this book it is a charming sweet romance between these two and I have no doubt that that the romance is swoonworthy, but what really, really knocks me off guard is the political commentary that I've heard is in this book. I've read a lot of reviews on it and a lot of the people who do give it a lower rating, it is purely because you can tell the political leanings of the author and I absolutely hate that. Like if I'm reading your book and you are incorporating politics into your book, I don't want to know what side of the political spectrum you are on. I want a well-educated and nuanced discussion of the issue so that I as the reader, if I knew absolutely nothing about the issue, would be able to make my own educated decision on the topic. Now I know that that's not what this book is about. This book is not necessarily supposed to be about politics, but it is naturally a part of the story because of the careers of the parents of these two boys who are falling in love. Now you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that based on some of the comments that I've heard that there is definitely some political talk. It is definitely leaning really far in one direction and I just don't have the time or the energy to put up with that. It's one of the reasons why I DNF'd that contemporary romance that was written by Ashley Winstead because you could just tell from within the first 12 pages of that story that this was going to lean one way politically and that the other side was going to be bashed very, very heavily. And I just don't have the patience for it, y'all. I believe that that type of rhetoric, I believe that that type of writing just further fuels the divisiveness that we have in our country and it's not actually helping anything. And it's certainly not something that I want to read about. So I just have a feeling that if I were to try to pick this up, I would be so angry and annoyed by that commentary in this book that it's going to overshadow everything else. But that's one of the reasons why I really have no interest in reading it and I probably am never going to read it. Another really popular book talk book that I have no interest in reading is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And the pure and simple reason why I have no interest in picking this up is because I did not like Circe by Madeline Miller. And didn't like is probably a harsh way of explaining that. I felt that the story was beautifully written. I just felt the story was overall very, very boring. I didn't connect with it at all. I to this day don't remember almost anything about this story. And it's not something that I have spent any time or energy thinking about or talking about since I read it. I believe it's a book that I read before I started my booktube channel. And since I've started this booktube channel, I have not mentioned that once. So it's definitely not a book that takes up any of my mental space whatsoever but just in general I really don't have a lot of interest in reading books based on Greek mythology even though I find mythology in general quite fascinating it's not really something that I'm looking for in my fictional stories there are very few retellings that actually work for me or books based on myth that actually work for me and they are definitely not something that I seek out so the song of Achilles even though I have heard that it is incredibly beautiful and that it will tear your heart out it's just not something that I've ever gravitated towards another really popular one that I have no plans on reading whatsoever is Babel by Ara Kwong. Part of the reason for that is similar to the reasons that I just described for Red, White, and Royal Blue. I know that Ara Kwong likes to impart a lot of social commentary in her books and that's not what I'm here for. That's really not what I'm wanting to read in my stories and if I'm being completely honest, I didn't really love The Poppy War. That was not a book that I thought was worth the hype whatsoever. I remember finishing that book and wondering what all the hype was about it, why people were so in love with it. I don't know. I felt like The Poppy War was lacking in almost every single way that mattered to me in a fantasy story, especially when it 
it came to the characters and connecting to them. So just because of my lackluster experience with the Poppy War and the fact that I know that some of these other releases by RF Kuang like Yellow Face and Babel definitely feature a high level of social commentary, I will not be reading Babel and I probably will not be reading RF Kuang as an author. Another one that seems to be getting a lot of hype on booktube these days is Magnolia Parks by Jess Hastings. I believe it is a series, like it's either a duology or a trilogy, I'm not entirely sure, but I just know based on the synopsis of the story and what I've heard from booktubers that I respect that it is absolutely not a story that I need to waste my time on. From what I understand, it just is the feature of a very extremely toxic relationship with the main character Magnolia Parks and like her ex-boyfriend. I guess they've broken up and like he cheated on her, she broke up with him and so now she's going off on like having random things trying to make him jealous but yet they share the same bed every single night. Like it's an incredibly messed up dynamic they have between the two. But to me, based on what I've heard about Magnolia Parks, it is just like straight up toxic. It is about two people doing absolutely horrific things to each other intentionally trying to get the other's attention and trying to make the other person jealous. And I just don't see what would be redeemable about that. I don't see why you would root for these characters. I don't see why you would like these characters and I don't see why you would waste your time with these characters. So I certainly will not be. So this next one is one that I really don't have many thoughts or feelings about it all. It's just kind of one of those books that anytime I see it on a shelf or anytime I hear somebody talk about, it really just goes in one ear and out the other. It's not something that has ever stuck with me. It's not something that has ever intrigued me enough to even really look more into it. Like I know that I've read the synopsis on Goodreads about this story, but nothing about it clicks as something that I am interested in, even though it does sound like it's a very character driven story. And that's typically my jam. But like I said, there's just something about this story that doesn't do it for me. And the book that I'm talking about is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Now I know that Sally Rooney is a pretty well liked contemporary slash literary fiction author. I've never read anything by her. I don't know if I will, to be honest, because this is just a situation where an author's works don't appeal to me. They don't grab me. They don't pique my interest. I mean, I assume that this story has merit. It's got over a million reviews and ratings on Goodreads and it's sitting at a 3.81, which is not a terrible rating overall, but I just don't care. So I probably will never be reading it. The next one I want to talk about is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Now this isn't one that I'm staunchly against reading. It's true that nothing has really ever drawn me towards this story. I do like the idea of a gothic setting. The premise overall does sound intriguing and I know that a lot of people have really enjoyed it overall. I personally would never have probably picked it up on my own and it would never be even something on my radar unless I had heard so many people talk about it on booktube. The thing is though, this is the only release by Silvia Moreno Garcia that I'm actually even remotely kind of interested in. And so I'm just not somebody that's going to waste my time picking up a book by an author and have it be something that I could totally love and then just have it be like any of their backlist or any of their newer releases. I have no interest in reading. It kind of feels like when you're really invested in a television show and it gets canceled after only a few episodes or one season where there's like no resolution. Now obviously this is a standalone story and you don't need to read any of the author's works in order to enjoy this story. But if I'm picking up a book, it's not just because I'm interested in this synopsis, but I could potentially become invested in the author. So if there's an author that has been out and they're releasing a new story and maybe they have never been on my radar before, but I'm really, really intrigued by this new story and I want to pick it up. I have a habit of going back and looking at their backlist and thinking, oh yeah, I'm really interested in all of these stories too. I may not read them, but just knowing that they have a lot of books that really intrigue me is enough to make me pick up that new release and then possibly continue with their new releases in the future. But if I'm picking up a story by an author and I know that there's really no hope of me picking up their backlist or even many of their releases in the future, it's just not something that I really want to waste my time on. But again, this is something that I could possibly be swayed either way towards. So if you have really strong feelings on Mexican Gothic and you really think that I should give it a try and pick it up, please let me know. I may consider it in the future. This next one is definitely a book talk and a booktube darling. And honestly, I have no problem with that whatsoever. This is just not my type of story. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This book is often described as middle grade for adults. And I can absolutely understand why so many people love this. From what I hear, it's fantastically wonderfully written. The characters in this story are phenomenal. And I've heard like this is just like the biggest hug in a book. I love that this book is giving so many people so much joy and that there are a lot of warm, heartwarming, hard hitting, touching vibes that are coming from this. I do know that it is a male male relationship and it just sounds like a sweet, beautiful story, but that's not really what I'm here for in all honesty. I am not a middle grade reader. So even though I know that this is technically not middle grade, I don't really want to read something that gives off middle grade vibes. I have personally tried to read Under the Whispering Door, but I got maybe a handful of pages into Under the Whispering Door and I just realized that it wasn't for me. And I just realized that I should have gone with my instincts. I am absolutely jealous of all of those who can find such love in TJ Klune. TJ Klune, I don't think is the author for me. Although I have heard fantastic things about his like, I think male male 
romance series that is on the adult side. So that could be something that I look into in the future. But just these middle grade for adult type stories that he writes, they're just not something that I personally feel the need to pick up. Another really popular one, and it's actually one that I recently mentioned in a new release video, is Bunny by Mona Awad. From what I understand, Bunny is kind of a dark academia-esque story. And what I hear about this is that it is very, very weird. And I think that weird is something that Mona Awad is probably known for just based on the newest release that I did talk about in that video called Rouge, as well as some of her other previous releases as well. And I just don't like weird stories. I need to be able to understand what's happening. I need to have context for it. I need to know the why and the how. That's another reason why I don't like vague magic systems in fantasy, or I don't like fantasy without a lot of complex world building because I need that contextual history. I need to know about the world, why the world is the way that it is, why it works and how it works and things like that in order for me to fully understand and connect the story. And I don't like to have so many questions during my reading experience. I have so many questions while I'm reading. I'm not going to be focusing on the story and I'm not going to be enjoying what I'm reading at all. And so if you have a weird story where not a whole lot is being explained and you're just expected to go with the flow, that is not me and that is not the reading experience that I want based on what I've heard about Bunny. That is kind of exactly what you get. So I know that there are a lot of people that really, really love Bunny and more power to you. If that is your type of book, absolutely go for it. Part of me wishes that it could be, but it is just not. I do not love weird stories. And so I'm going to stay far, far away from Bunny and probably Mona A. Watt in general. All right, I have two more that I want to mention. One is kind of a cheat, so we'll save it for last. So we'll go ahead and talk about the penultimate one, which is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Now, this is one that I've never even looked up the synopsis for. I knew right off the bat that it really wasn't something that I personally wanted to read. All that I hear is that this is nonstop, bad thing after bad thing after bad thing happening to the main character, and it is basically trauma porn. Even though I do love hard hitting emotional stories, there has to be a point to those stories. Now, again, I have never read anything about this, and all I know about it are from the people who've read it and I've heard reviews about this story. So there may be a reason why Hanya Yanagihara put this main character through so much stuff. So maybe by the end, you have all of the answers you were looking for. I don't know. I don't know if there is a purpose to the story and the suffering of this character. But just based on some of the things that I've heard, I'm getting the impression that maybe there's not, and maybe there really is no hope of a happy ending in the story. And I don't necessarily need a happy ending. But like I said, I need to understand why all of this stuff happened to this character. What are we as readers supposed to get out of it, except an endless amount of tears? I just don't really know if I care to read it. If you have read that story, I'm very interested to know your thoughts. I don't necessarily think that this is one that I could be swayed to read, but I would be really interested if some of what I've heard is kind of spot on for the story and whether or not you loved it. I'd love to know. Okay, and this last one is a little bit of a cheat. And I say that because it is a series and it is one that I've read the first book in. However, I did not read the first book in this series because I was interested in it. I read it because I used to be a member of Chelsea Palmer's Patreon. Unfortunately, we haven't seen any content from her over the past year. We have no idea really what's going on. Even those of us who remained in her Patreon for months after we stopped hearing from her at all and after she stopped posting content, we don't know what's going on with her. So we really hope that she's okay. We think about her. We check in with each other in the chat sometimes. But all that to say, I was a member of her Patreon and this was one of the book club selections. And I believe it was early 2022 when we read this. I think so because the first book in this series ended up being one of my worst books in 2022. I'm talking about the Twisted Love series by Anna Huang. And I hated it. I absolutely hated the story. There was so much about it that was awful. I'm not going to really go much into my thoughts and feelings on it because like I said, it was one of the worst books that I read in 2022. And I believe that I did talk about it in a video. So I'll try to remember to link that down below for you. It was a brother's best friend romance, which is not a trope that I hate. It was just the execution of it that was entirely poor. The main character was beyond a possessive alpha hole. It was to the point where it was extremely toxic. There was nothing sexy or redeeming about him whatsoever, in my opinion. And the plot lines in that story were soap opera level drama. I could not suspend my disbelief. I am traumatized by that book. I don't want anything to do with that series or that author in general because I thought that it was trash. So yes, it is a cheat because I have read the first book in the series, but it's not something that would have ever been on my radar to read. And it certainly is no longer on my radar to read the rest of those books after my experience with that awful, awful book. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are some of the popular book talk slash book two books that I have no interest really in reading. I feel like I got a little bit salty in this video. I'm sorry about that. That wasn't really my intention. Apparently I feel more passionate about not reading some of these books than I ever realized. Please comment down below and let me know some books that you know of that are extremely popular on booktube and booktalk that you have absolutely no interest in reading. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me that symbol, you know, with the circle with the slash through it, the like, no, do not cross, do not touch, do not eat kind of symbol for all of the books that I do not plan to read that are popular on booktalk and booktube. And as always, if you like this,
this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to see and chat with you in one of those videos, or of course, chat with you on any of the other platforms that I'm a part of. I always leave links to my Instagram, Goodreads, and IG threads down below if you would love to connect with me on there. And until next time, guys, bye.